what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting mini PC from Menace Forum known as the MC560 now this is kind of a pre-release unit that they sent over for me to take a look at and as you can see when you compare this to other mini PCs on the market right now we've got a really strange design and it's for good reason because this mini PC actually has a 2.5K resolution camera built in. It also has dual microphones with an AI noise canceling chip and dual stereo speakers. These are high fidelity speakers and overall it's definitely a lot different from other mini PCs we've seen on the market. But I do think somebody could get a lot of use out of this if they're, you know, in a home office setting and need to be on Skype, Teams, or whatever. Another use case scenario that I thought about was, you know, using this as your dedicated video recorder slash audio recorder when you're streaming your games on Twitch or YouTube. That way you have a whole separate setup there and you can just game on your main PC and use this to capture everything else. So yeah, just taking a look at their spec sheet here, that built-in 2.5K camera will do 30 FPS recording. It's got a super wide field of view, dual high fidelity speakers in the PC itself. You can connect to 4K 60Hz display directly to this mini PC. It's running Windows 11 Pro, a built-in dual mic array with AI powered noise cancellation. And if we take a look at the bottom of this PC, it's got a little foot that we can kind of fold out and it'll give us 10 degrees of tilt. Taking a look at the I.O., over here on the right-hand side, we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, full-size, USB 3.2 Gen 1, and USB Type-C. This is a 3.2C port, and it will support 4K60 video out. Not much going on over here on the left-hand side, but moving around back, we've got Gigabit Ethernet, a full-size HDMI port, and another USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, along with our power input. When it comes to the specs of the MC560, for the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 5 5-5-5625U. Six cores, 12 threads, and this is based on Zen 3. Base clock of 2.3 GHz and a boost up to 4.3. We've got that built-in Radeon Vega 7 iGPU up to 1800 MHz. It will support up to 64 GB of DDR4 running in dual channel at 3200 MHz. This one here happens to have 16 GB of RAM. We've also got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. When it comes to storage, this supports an M.2 PCIe 3.0 SSD, and it'll support a 2280mm SSD. And for the operating system, we're going to be running Windows 11 Pro. But before we move over there, I did want to give you a quick look at the quality this camera's putting out, and I'm actually using the built-in Windows 11 Pro camera app. So we've got sound and video going through that, but you could always use OBS if you wanted to. And obviously, it's going to work with Zoom, Skype, Teams, whatever you're using for your video conferencing or video chats, it's going to support it. It's going to act just like a USB camera when this thing's all set up. So I've actually got some pretty decent lighting here, and we're filming at 2.5K, 30fps, that's the maximum, but you could go to 1080, 16x9, right now we're at a 4x3 aspect ratio, and I think it's doing a pretty good job. I believe over on the Menace Forum website, they do have some more samples posted, so if you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave a link for the website in the description. So here we are with Windows 11, been up and running for a little while, I've got everything updated, and it's a very snappy system. Now on the channel, we've actually taken a look at the Ryzen 5 5600U in the past, and it's a really nice little CPU for everyday desktop needs. Web browsing, 4K video playback, document editing, email checking, some light photo and 1080p video editing is totally possible on a machine like this. We can go up to 64 gigs of RAM, but we've got 16 here. And we've got the built-in Vega graphics. So obviously the iGPU performance here isn't going to match something like Ryzen 6000 or 7000 with those RDNA 2 graphics. But you know, just for everyday use, it actually does a great job. Um, like I mentioned, 4K video playback is totally possible. We'll take a look at that in a second. But web browsing is really snappy here, given that we have Wi-Fi 6, but it would have been nice if they included a 2.5 gig port on the rear. Everything loads up really quickly. Let's uh, head over to YouTube, and we'll do a 4K demo here. Give me a second. Make sure we're at 4K, full screen. Stats for nerds. So I've always had really good luck with 4K video playback on these Ryzen 5000 chips. And you know, if you wanted to do two 4K 60 streams, because we can connect two monitors to this, we've got more than enough power with that 5625U. Six cores, 12 threads pumping it out. And when it comes to video playback on that Radeon Vega 7i GPU, it can definitely handle it. 
And right now, I mean, we're just streaming from YouTube, but if you wanted to do HBO Max, Showtime, Netflix, 4K60, you're gonna have a great time with this little PC. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on the MC560. And first up, we've got Geekbench 6. Keep in mind, this is brand new. I don't have much to compare this to, but it looks like single core came in with a 1,833, multi 6912. And as time goes on, since Geekbench 6 is brand new to the market, I'll be able to run this on more Ryzen APUs. That way we can kind of get a fair comparison there in these scores. I also ran PC Mark 10, and this is a great real world benchmark. It tests essentials, productivity, digital content creation. We get a total score of 5,941. I also wanted to run a couple GPU benchmarks. So here we have 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark, 7,158. And finally, Night Raid coming in with a 14,742. This isn't going to win any benchmark awards, but you know, for what it is, it's putting out some decent performance using it as an everyday desktop. And I know a lot of people aren't going to pick this up for gaming, but I personally still wanted to test some games out. And the first one here is Street Fighter V. 900p with a medium low mix works great on these lower end APUs. I mean, be it 4000 or 5000, with 4000 series, you usually have to take it down to 720p, but here we're running at 60 FPS. Next up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 720p low with FSR set to performance. We only average 46 FPS, but this is one of those games that's really hard on these APUs. And if you wanted to run this at 45 FPS, you could always lock it down there and have a pretty decent time with it. And since I was right there, I figured I'd go ahead and test out Cyberpunk 2077. I had a feeling we weren't going to get the best performance with this game here. It's definitely a harder one to run. And at 720p low settings, we get an average of around 36 FPS. But the final one I tested here was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I use recommended settings, but we are at 720p and this will enable FSR. I believe it sets it to performance. We got an average of 73 FPS and a low of 42. Now keep in mind, the games that I tested are newer AAA games. If you wanted to go with something like Skyrim, not a problem to run that at medium 1080p. Left 4 Dead 2, Half-Life, the older stuff is gonna work great on the 5625U. Another thing I wanted to take a look at here was total system power consumption. So while I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into what's called a kilowatt meter. And at idle, this only pulls 10 watts. Average gaming, it did jump up to 41 watts. And the maximum that I could get out of this was 54 watts. Now I'm in high performance mode. And if you're not going to be doing any gaming, then you'll never see, you know, average gaming or that maximum power draw. And in fact, 4K video playback on this, it only jumps up to around 14 watts. So overall, I mean, it's definitely a lower power consumption mini PC. And given that this APU isn't pulling a lot of wattage, the fan doesn't have to spin up that high, so it's really, really quiet. And if you're one of those people who are really bugged by a uh, fan noise, then you don't have to worry about it with this one. So in the end, I think it's a pretty interesting little mini PC if you have that kind of use case scenario that this could go along with. Obviously, it's not a full-fledged gaming PC. A lot of these mini PCs aren't, but we kind of utilize them as if they were. Older games, indie games, and even emulation on the 5625U is going to work great, but don't go into this thinking you've got a AAA gaming monster because that's not exactly what it is. If you're working from home and you're always on Zoom or Skype, then I think this could come in really handy. And like I mentioned, I mean, you could always use this as kind of a secondary streaming PC just to capture your audio and video. That way you don't need to use any extra resources on the PC that you're gaming with. So there are a few scenarios where I think this little mini PC would kind of pair up perfectly with the setup you already have. And, you know, if you're one of those people and interested in learning a little more about the Menace Forum MC560, I'll leave some links in the description. You can pick this up over there with either 16 gigabytes of RAM or 32 gigabytes of RAM, but both of them only come with a 512 gigabyte SSD. I mean, it's really up to you in the end. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.